May 21st, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Romans chapter 3 from the New Testament. Therefore, what advantage does the Jew have, or what is the value of circumcision? Actually, there are many advantages. First of all, the Jews were entrusted with the oracles of God. What then? If some did not believe, does their unbelief nullify the faithfulness of God? Absolutely not. Let God be proven true, and every human being shown up as a liar, just as it is written, so that you will be justified in your words and will prevail when you are judged. But if our unrighteousness demonstrates the righteousness of God, what shall we say? The God who inflicts wrath is not unrighteous, is he? I am speaking in human terms. Absolutely not, for otherwise how could God judge the world? For if by my lie the truth of God enhances his glory, why am I still actually being judged as a sinner? And why not say, let us do evil so that good may come of it, as some who slander us allege that we say, their condemnation is deserved. What then, are we better off? Certainly not, for we have already charged that Jews and Greeks alike are all under sin, just as it is written, there is no one righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands. There is no one who seeks God. All have turned away. Together they have become worthless. There is no one who shows kindness, not even one. Their throats are open graves. They deceive with their tongues. The poison of asp is under their lips. Their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Ruin and misery are in their paths and the way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now we know that whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For no one is declared righteous before him by the works of the law, for through the law comes the knowledge of sin. But now apart from the law, the righteousness of God which is attested by the law and the prophets, has been disclosed, namely, the righteousness of God through the faithfulness of Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, but they are justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. God publicly displayed Him at His death as the mercy seat accessible through faith, this was to demonstrate his righteousness, because God in his forbearance had passed over the sins previously committed. This was also to demonstrate his righteousness in the present time, so that he would be just and the justifier of the one who lives because of Jesus' faithfulness. Where, then, is boasting? It is excluded by what principle of works? No, but by the principle of faith. For we consider that a person is declared righteous by faith apart from the works of the law. Or is God the God of the Jews only? Is he not the God of the Gentiles too? Yes, of the Gentiles too. Since God is one, he will justify the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised through faith. Do we then nullify the law through faith? Absolutely not. Instead, we uphold the law. God, I, I love chapter 3. Well, I love all of Romans, but I really love chapter 3. Where we start to get a more powerful understanding of what the cross really was. That your justified anger at our sin had to be appeased. We could never, referring to the Jews, we could never fulfill that by obeying the law. Because none of us are like your son. None of us are perfect. So we would never ever get to that level. That you wouldn't be angry at us for sinning against you. And then out of love that we will never ever understand. At least not while we're here on earth. You sent your son Jesus Christ to the cross. And he went willingly to die for our sins. It was at the cross where your righteous anger and your amazing 
boundless love for us met as your son hung on the cross for us. When we talk about justification by faith, and I think that starts to be a term that sometimes we can gloss over um, as we're reading the Bible. Justification by faith doesn't cancel out the law. It actually then becomes the law. And we need to understand that. The law shows that we cannot keep the law because we're humans with a lot of sin in our hearts. Thus, the law cannot save us. I want to be really clear about this because I have friends who are Jewish. The law cannot save you. Paul says this. Our righteousness can only be achieved through that faith in Christ. Through the appeasement of that righteous anger that you have towards us, God. You were looking towards the cross. When the cross happened, when Jesus' crucifixion happened, you were looking at the cross. And then you get to look back towards the cross. And somehow we're blessed in all of this. That for those of us who believe in you, believe in your son, Jesus Christ, because of his perfect life and his perfect death and his perfect fulfillment of this law that we keep talking about, that he took on the sins of the entire world and has achieved something that we can never do. His death on the cross for all who believe made us okay in your eyes, God. Now we need to keep in mind how powerful your love for us was. See, we need to get this, God. Because you were so angry at us for being sinful people. Yet in that same moment, you loved us so much that you sent a perfect sacrifice for our sins, knowing we could never get it ourselves. We could never get that forgiveness ourselves. We could never attain that level of perfection. Not through the law, not through our worldly needs, not through boasting ourselves and making us um, look good to you. <laughs> There's only one way to get there, and that's through the cross. God, every time I read the Bible, I'm just overwhelmed more and more at how much you love us and even though I will never <laughs> I will never understand how powerful that love is I know that I don't deserve it and yet you still give it to all who believe God I know there's people listening today that that might be on the fence they may be wondering what that looks like to have a relationship with you Maybe they're lukewarm Christians and aren't too sure about if they're going to heaven or not. And I know that if they talk to you today with their heart, that you will answer them. That you will show them what they need to know. The Bible talks repeatedly about we just have to look around and understand the power of who you are, God. Again, getting from that head knowledge to that living it out in our heart. Thank you seems like such a tiny word. But it's all I have to offer. Thank you. For loving us enough to want to not only have relationships with us. But for sending your only son as the only sacrifice that could possibly take our place in justification and fulfillment of that law. That's some crazy awesome love, God. <laughs> in your son's name I pray. Amen.